having confessed our sins to God and asking for his forgiveness for your penance for the next three nights besides offering your prayers to also take one of the three readings as prescribed by the church on this heritage Sunday and to reread at your leisure and to meditate on the Word of God and now let us recite together the second act of confession I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let every person be subordinate <coughs> to the higher authorities. For this, no authority except from God, and those that exist have been established by God. The highest rules over the kingdom of men, he gave to whom he knows. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace with people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father. Lord God, Lamb 
God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, for you rule over all, all nations. May we, who through baptism are heirs of your kingdom, always be worthy of our high calling. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated for the hearing of the word. <clears throat> A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life. <clears throat> and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the sight in fullness of the, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant may justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. First of all, then, I ask that supplications, prayers, petitions, and thanksgiving be offered for everyone, for kings and for all in authority, that we may lead a quiet and tranquil life in all devotion and dignity. This is good and pleasing to God, our Savior, who wills everyone. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet remained without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. This is the word of the Lord. Thank, Thank you, God. God. Thank you, Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Lord, open up my mouth that I may <clears throat> declare your praise. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. Glory to you, Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He replied, What do you wish me to do for you? They answered him, Grant that in your glory, we may sit one at your right and the other at your left. Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? They said to him, we can. Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. 
But to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. Jesus summoned them and said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. Nyek bencha pafalanius Christus. Your testimonies are my heritage forever, for they are the joy of my heart. These words are taken from the book of Psalms, Psalm 119 verse 111 to you my dear brothers and sisters today we celebrate heritage sunday who along with many other churches are connected as a common people by a single common thread which binds each of us in the judeo-christian tradition to what we call heritage. St. Paul was to speak of this common heritage as Christians, first being known as followers of the way, and later as Christians in the city of Antioch, where he spoke of the principles of the one faith, one Lord, and one baptism. Now my brothers and sisters, heritage is simply defined as that which is inherited. To understand our multifaceted heritage, we must first begin with that which we have inherited. To understand this, we must first seek to understand our beginnings with God the creator of heaven and earth, as we read in the book of beginnings, the book of Genesis. As a people of God, we find our heritage with God's covenant, with Abraham, as found in Genesis. God says to Abraham, I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you. The kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants. After you, the generations to come, to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. We find in this heritage an eternal 
blessing that would come to future generations. In the book of Deuteronomy, we read, And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord, your God, being careful to do all the commandments that I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb, and the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your herds, and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. Throughout the entire Old Testament, my brothers and sisters, we see God keeping his promise of his covenant to all those like you and me whom he has called. In the New Testament, we are reminded of another common heritage, a heritage with God as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the first letter of Peter, Peter reminds us of this heritage. He says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you might proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. You know, it was out of love that God chose each of us to have a special relationship with him. In this relationship, he gives us meaning and purpose of life as taught by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Jesus himself declares this calling in John, we read the words of Jesus. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. John reminds us in his gospel account that Jesus refers to himself as the good shepherd. I believe that when Jesus spoke the words, come and follow me, he was not just speaking to Peter and Andrew and James and John and the others, but he calls each of us to come and follow. In the book of Romans, Paul says, for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, that is the very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God and heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Today, being Heritage Sunday, we find another aspect of our common heritage. We find this heritage in the great American nation, where we as citizens of the United States of America 
have received the blessings of freedom and democracy as set forth by our founding fathers and as found in the various documents such as the Declaration of Independence as well as the Constitution. It is these principles, my brothers and sisters, that so many died so that many would be free and live. We must never forget this heritage given to us and we need to cherish and not tarnish these principles which sadly to say we see in the division of many people of our great nation. Today many of us share another heritage of being of Polish ethnicity. The history, the language, the customs and traditions speak volumes of a Polish nation that had always sought to be free and to be a nation of people who were proud. We must never forget this heritage given to us but it also, my brothers and sisters, encompasses the different ethnic heritages that we hold dear within our hearts and respect. Finally, on this Heritage Sunday, we have yet another heritage, that of being a member of the Polish National Catholic Church. It is a rich heritage that was given to us through the efforts of our first bishop and organizer of the Polish National Catholic Church, the Most Reverend Francis Hoder, who along with the early organizers of the Polish National Catholic Church were persecuted. Bishop Hoder taught it that it was through truth, work, and struggle the model of our church that we shall overcome. And it was through their efforts, and today we continue to affirm our heritage. For God did not abandon those who sought him through his word. In 1929, this heritage found its way to South Deerfield where a group of Polish immigrants heard and answered the call of God to build and dedicate this church based on their faith and their love of God. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, there is so much on this Heritage Sunday to be proud of as we remember our beginnings and the continuation of the covenant that God has established which each and every single one of us. It all began with a promise that was made that if we faithfully obey the voice of the Lord our God and came carefully fulfill all his commandments that he has given unto us, then we, we will be blessed by the Lord our God and that he will set us on high above all other nations of the earth. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore, amen. Yek benjo pafaloni Jesus Christus.
I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. He hath not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary, and he came again. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipfully glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge my baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Please be seated. Give honor to all. Love the community. Fear God. Honor the King. Lord 
Lord God, we offer you the sacrifice that the gospel may be established among us, not only in word, but also in power. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Give thanks unto the Lord our God. He is right to give him and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son Jesus Christ our Lord. On this Heritage Sunday, we give thanks for the blessings you have given unto us. We also thank you for sending us an advocate and a counselor in the person of the Holy Spirit to support us, to teach us, and help to make us holy. Through your Holy Spirit, Father, you give your gifts of grace in every time and season as a guide for your church. Therefore, on this Heritage Sunday, we join with the voices of angels and archangels, along with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God, power, and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our Prime Bishop, and Paul, our Bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the Apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. In our prayers, may we pray for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. May we pray the stay for peace, in our world that the love of Christ might be felt within each of us we also remember in our prayers and pray most humbly for all abused and neglected children for all abused and neglected animals and for all victims of violence both here and abroad we pray this day and give thanks for all those who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad, and pray that the Almighty Father would send his angels to watch over, to protect and defend all those who defend us. And Father, we also pray this day for all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, who offer up to you, the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with an honor above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace. 
that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord, amen. O God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest an infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily, in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that so moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. <clears throat> In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which a high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice of immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants, all those who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. 
her. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, uh, and following divine example, we say with confidence, secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ your son and our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and our God forever and ever may the peace of the Lord be always with you commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you. Who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in us. Living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, those of you who will not be receiving the Eucharist sacramentally, let us now offer an act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love my Lord and Savior. Amen. We shall take 
the bread of heaven, and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
and the king have nothing to do with those who rebel against them. For suddenly arises the destruction they send and the ruin from either one and who will measure. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, through the Eucharist we have received, help us to fill our duties to you and our brothers and sisters. We ask this in the name of our, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Sacrifice is offered. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which we, the unworthy, have offered in the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found the life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. And he who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten, not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God, the Word. became flesh and made his dwelling among us and we have seen his glory the glory of an only son coming from the father filled with enduring love thanks, thanks be to god, god. Thank you. 